healthy and live a long life with only an average income or to be a multi-millionaire and die young, which would you choose and why? I'd be a multi-millionaire and die young because i uh, just have fun for like a weekend. I'd be a millionaire because so I could buy a lot of stuff. You're better off taking a long life and having family friends because that's what makes life worth living. I'd be the multi-millionaire because it's like I'm the type of person that would like to go out with the Big Bang. There's so much I want to do in life, like when I get older and like explore the world and everything. Like, I live with an average salary. As long as you're happy, like money doesn't really matter that much. It, it doesn't matter how much money you make because it's not going to buy happiness. Millionaire? I'm die young. Why? Yeah, why? Because I can do whatever I want. I don't care if I die young. I did everything she's going to do when she's old. No, I'd rather be average and live a long, happy life. I would live a long, happy life. Live long, like, uh, because I just, like, I have a lot to live for, and I just want to live and have fun. Be a millionaire and die young. Why? Because all the greats died when they were 27, like Jim Morrison and Jimi Hendrix, and they were pretty rich, and they had a great life. Happy, healthy, and long life. Why? I don't know, it's just better to live longer. Healthy and happy because obviously if you were going to die young, there's really no point in that. You couldn't spend any of that money or you know help anybody out. Like a, I want to like look back and be like glad with my life, so whichever, as long as I could like die happy, I guess. But uh, yeah, I guess the longer life, right? Yeah, <laughs> I think so. Probably happy and healthy, just so that I can experience life to the fullest. I would just like to be rich. I think it's very comfortable to live like that. I'm not, I'm not sure which one I would choose. Happiness is more valuable than, you know, the car you can buy with a million dollars. I mean, we're, we're kids from Patterson. We don't make a lot of money, you know. And we, and we still have fun. We're still here enjoying ourselves. Average salary is fine with me. I don't need a million dollars. Yeah, I don't need a million dollars to survive. Average pay is good, because I know how to have a lot of fun. You just have to have fun people with you, like these people. Yeah, I agree. Never <laughs> Okay, Jack, this is the question of the day. If you had the choice to live a long life as a, on an average income salary or a short life as a millionaire, which would you choose? Well, I'd probably choose the long life on an average income because I want to have a long life to be able to accomplish everything that I set out to do. What about you? I'm not really sure because if as a millionaire I could be using that money to do good things and doing charity work and really giving of myself, I might choose that. But I wouldn't want to be a rich person who just sits around and is greedy, so maybe I should pick the other one. I don't know. It's a hard question. How much does one person need? How much can one person realistically use? Can you be happy enough just having enough for your needs? What happens when you have more than you can use? How much is too much? That's what we'll be talking about today. Hi everyone, I'm Jack. And I'm Beth. And, and this, this is Real Faith, Faith TV. TV. Today we'll meet Bethany, who will tell us what she thinks is too much and why we should all be grateful for what we have. We'll also talk with some guests here in the studio. But first, let's go back to the teens we met at the start of our show and find out if they feel that we live in a materialistic society. But a lot of people now are just driven by money. Yeah, because everyone wants the big cars, the big houses. I think society is too based on money too much, you know, and everything. Like, people would just like forget about it, they'd be a lot happier and everything. Oh, you yeah. have to be fresh. Because if, if you're not up with society, they look down on you like, oh, you beat. It's like all about like looking good and like being like popular and stuff like that. Because everybody wants to look their best and everybody wants the best clothes, the best everything. They want to look better than everybody else. So there's all those TV shows that show like celebrities like lives and like their how like you're jealous yeah basically as much as they have their cars and their houses and like everything that they have and like that's like supposed to be the American like the American like dream like that's what that is so everyone like strives for that yeah I think people focus too much on having the best of everything and they don't really get to enjoy life because it makes people feel good about themselves if they have better things than other people yeah I'd have to say that our society definitely is a little materialistic and all. It's fun. It's funny though how uh, everyone just wants to be happy, but all they want to do is get all that money and stuff to be happy. Well, it seems that everyone is trying to get nice cars, nice houses, something picture perfect. There are a lot of greedy people up high, just making a lot of money off of everybody. That's that's capitalism. That's America. I think 
America on a whole is caught up in like what we have to own and bigger TVs and bigger cars and money on the whole scale. And I think that, you know, maybe we should find a way to just distract from it and get back to like wholesome values and things like that. I thought that was really interesting, those two girls, the one was saying how you see all the TV shows about celebrities' lifestyles and how it makes you jealous. I think that that's a, a big part of why our society is so materialistic today. But do you think that things are for possessing or for using? What's their purpose? Lots of people think having the newest gadgets or the most complete collection of things is a status symbol that makes you better than someone without these things. Let's meet our guests and ask them how they feel about this. They are. Marissa, Katie, Anthony, Caitlin, Matt, and Kristen. So guys, do you feel like we live in a materialistic society where people are obsessed with what they have? Yes, because a lot of people want to have things and it's not the things that really matter. It's like that you have it and that you really want to share it with other people. People just want and want and want. Yeah, everybody wants to have like the bigger and better thing than the other person. So yeah, it is a materialistic society. We live in America, and here in America, we have what's called the American dream. The American dream is that you have a big house, that you have a lot of money, that you have a not necessarily a large on family. The yeah, beach that's what that. you're saying. Yeah, and uh, the American dream is <clears throat> largely funded on the idea of just greed and just having as much as you can. It's not necessarily on love and knowing people and having respect. I think it's especially hard in our teenage society, if you will, I mean in high school, having the clothes so you look cool enough to be in the in crowd with everybody else or the accessories that you have or even like your backpack or your binders or everything <laughs> you have to try and look cool or so a lot of people think in today's society. Our whole society is based on how you look and what you have as opposed to what you are and and what you give. Yeah, it's it's wrong. But it's hard in our society not to be materialistic. Parents prepare their children to join the consumer society almost from birth. From the time they're infants, children see their parents' spending habits and begin to make their own purchasing decisions early in life. The consumerist culture in America convinces us that we're born to shop. Next, our spotlight guest, Bethany, talks with us about her experience with materialism. Teens nowadays are into having the best of everything. If they don't have the best, if they don't have the Armani suit or they're not wearing the Gucci purse around their shoulder, they're not happy. What status symbol is it? Wow, I have money. It doesn't really matter. It's more of who are you as a person? What does that mean? They don't live life out uh, the way God intended. Like God wanted you to be happy, help others. But these people are just worried about what they have and what, and what they don't have. And if they don't have it, they need it. And if and it's just, it's an endless cycle. There's a few people that I know that have the uh, best car, for example, a Mustang, got it for his birthday, for his 17th birthday. Why couldn't, why couldn't you just be happy with, say, uh, I personally, I have a car, I have a 93 Camry, 170,000 miles on it, I'm proud of it. I'm like, as long as, it moves, it has four wheels, it goes, but I, I don't need, I don't need the big car. It's, it's just be happy with what you have and you're lucky to have anything. Well, there was a time uh, when I guess I was less immature when I was younger. Uh, for example, when I was like six or seven, there was those big Power Ranger like type things that I just had to have. Like I couldn't do, I couldn't do anything without that Power Ranger. And I was gonna do anything in my power to get it. And then after a while, I think it was probably for my birthday, I, I got the Power Ranger and maybe played with it three times. So, but I, I'm pretty sure I've outgrown that. <laughs> I remember this time when I was little and I was at the supermarket with my mom and I wanted those candies that you go in and you scoop out yourself and she would not let me get them. So I reached in and I took some and put them in my pocket because I wanted it so bad, that whole, you know, what she was saying with materialism. And the moment we left the store, I realized what I had done. Not only, like,
being greedy and selfish and caught up in consumer society, but stealing. And I cried and I wanted to bring them back, but they were all melted in my pocket. And well, it was a bad, bad experience. <laughs> yeah, I have a story too. Like whenever I go on like a class trip, I always have to get a souvenir. So this one time I went to Medieval Times and I got this hat. I had to I got have the crown. The I, I got like a jester <laughs> hat, you know, with uh -huh. little bells on the end. I had to have it. And then after I got it, I went home, put it in a drawer, and I have not worn it since $25. That was like almost all my money. I was like 11. And uh, <laughs> it was a waste. I, it I ended totally up hear being you. a waste. I think it can be natural for children to want everything they see. And there are so many choices today. Have you ever thought about m the many different kinds of crackers there are? Wheat, multigrain, low fat, low carb, no fat, no salt, low salt. The stores can't even stock the different varieties. And the media employ marketing strategies that convince us that more is better. We're sold on the idea that the good life hinges on owning this, this cell phone or that type of car. Fast food restaurants invite consumers to supersize their meals. Not settling for enough and always wanting more has become a mantra in American society. So, is it fair for us to blame the media um, on the materialistic society uh, values today's society has? I think so because a lot of children watch TV and they say, oh, that truck is so cool. I have to get that. But the TV is also saying, gotta get this and gotta get this. And like Nike, they say, just do it. And like, oh, I can do it in those sneakers. You know, <laughs> like, oh, okay, I'll buy them. And people just look at that and say, I want it. Well, I don't think that media is solely responsible. You know, it, it's the parenting, too, because, you know. I agree. I mean, who put the, t the kids in front of the TV, you know? Because pa some parents just, you know, in order to shut the kids up, they just say, all right, here, here's a TV. So, you know, they have nothing to learn. Or here's from. whatever it, it, um, material thing that they're asking for. Yeah. They just give it to them, yeah. Yeah, like they just, they'll just be watching the TV, and they'll learn all their values from TV and not from their parents. TV also creates an unreal normalcy, because there really is no normal, but on TV, the normal is they have a big mansion on Long Island, and they have a little butler, maybe, or <laughs> they, uh, they go out for dinner every night in a fancy restaurant, and they drive a Mercedes, and that's not normal. That's, that's not even real for a good 10 percentage of the country, so yeah, and what are we they, teaching our children? They get you with whenever the person, the person everything is sad, and everything until the, you get the toy and then the kid it just lights up and then they, they had this uh, commercial for some toy and everything was in drab colors and then as soon as the person got it the screen went completely like bright with everything so it's really showing that you can't be happy unless you have this which is just well it's not even just little kids with toys it I mean as teenagers, um, being cool and being popular if you buy the right clothing, or even for adults, you'll be successful and um, if you drive this car, or I mean, it's really not just little children. It's people of all ages or all throughout society. How much influence do your friends and peers have over the things you want? Do you think most of your friends and peers are materialistic, or do they place more worth on people and important things that money can't buy? Let's go back to our Teens on the Street segment and see if the teens we talked with knew people who were materialistic. I know um, friends' parents who, uh, you know, work extremely hard on their jobs, but, you know, in turn, they lose uh, the hours they get to spend with their family. And, of course, the idea is that your family is more important than your job. Depends on where you go. I mean, I know I live in the city. The kids are there. You know, they kind of want to just get cars or whatever. But I go to my school and kids tend to be less materialistic, but there's still the kids there who want money and cars and fun stuff like that. I live in Livingston, New Jersey. And <laughs> there are very uh, rich young ladies there who believe in only buying clothes. And that, that's what makes them happy. Yeah, a lot of people are obsessed with possessions, cell phones, TVs in their rooms, whatever, you know. I know somebody who is obsessed with a car, and um, it ruined a lot of his relationships. It happens. It happens to everyone. You know, like something shiny and new that you want comes out, and you know you want it, and for a while it just takes over you. You know, and you do lose sight, and I think that happens to everyone. 
Yeah, there's some people that are like that, but I mean, I guess it's hard. Everyone knows somebody that's materialistic. It's just like a common trait of most Americans and people in general. The trends, the society, it's what's wrong with America. Everybody is so caught up in all the stuff that doesn't matter, because it's what makes you cool. I think it's important to remember, though, that just because you have something doesn't necessarily make you greedy or bad. If you're still willing to give of yourself and share what you have with others and you have a relationship with God, then there's not necessarily anything wrong with having. It doesn't make you a bad person, per se. But there is obviously a difference between needing and wanting. It's a sad reality that our consumer culture has deliberately blurred the lines between the two. To some extent, we are unable to distinguish between what we want and what we need. Sometimes we need a dose of reality to see that life is not what you see on television or in the magazines. This happened to Bethany. Next, she shares an experience which taught her to be grateful for the simple things in life. Uh, my church and I, there was a group of us that went down to Mexico and we built houses for the homeless. We were in a compound with uh, living around the Mexican people. It was 100 degree weather. Uh, just sitting there with the, interacting with these Mexican people who had absolutely nothing. They squatted on the land for three years and after that point they have uh, the option of building their own cinder block house. The Mexican children definitely who were down there had no clothes like they'd run around with their diapers on. If you looked at the bottom of their feet they had their feet were just all calluses just from walking around. And they were so excited just to have the American people there. After we were done working, they, um, they asked us for our clothes, the clothes that we had been sweating in and had cement all over us for the past week. They, they wanted those clothes. They were so excited to have those clothes. And it just sh went to show you that no matter what, they were happy. Like, why couldn't I be that happy with a cement shirt? I know exactly what she means. I went away just uh, a couple of weeks ago and did Habitat for Humanity with my church's youth group. And one particular family struck me in particular. This man worked for Habitat and he was like our crew leader and helped us to build everything. And he was telling us about how he worked another job till 1 a.m. and then had to be there at 7 o'clock in the morning to start building. And then one night at dinner we got the opportunity to meet his family and see his daughters. And it, it was just a uh, total a culture shock, I guess, to see the difference between the way um, they live and the way that I live my life every day. And it definitely made me more grateful for the things I have and made me want to give more of myself. Have any of you had an experience which taught you to be grateful for what you have and not to be consumed by the possessions of the world? Well, um, me and my brother both work in a grocery store and uh, there's a lot of the guys that work in the back happen to be Mexican. so. Uh, one, one guy in particular, he must have been, I don't know, maybe 21, 22, and uh, one day he brought in a couple pictures from back uh, from Mexico. He had uh, a wife and two, two kids, and I just realized, you know, this guy, he came to America to work, and he's, I know that he, sent mo he sends money from America back to his family. So I'm just thinking, wow, if this guy comes all the way to America just to supply his family with enough money, then I'm... I should be grateful for the things I have that I don't have to go anywhere to make money. Yeah, my cousin works at a, uh, a bar on the Nevesink River and uh, there's this guy there who works like the graveyard shift and, uh, and my cousin knows that he works the graveyard shift till like two or three in the morning, sleeps for like two hours, gets up and goes to work at another restaurant for like the entire day then goes back to that shift and gets like three hours of sleep a day and he sends like almost every penny back home and it's like just a completely different experience like just knowing that these people they don't have anything and they give like every what little they have back to their families so that they can come to America it's uh, just like amazing I went to San Francisco on a family vacation and we were walking around the streets and there there seemed to be a lot of homeless people and I just kept wondering why why is there all these homeless people and then I just kept thinking I, I'm staying with my family in a hotel every night with food I went to restaurants I was eating healthy and these people were on the streets every night while I was in my hotel room and I just felt bad because like 
Uh, they don't have anything and I have everything I, I want. I had a similar experience when I was on vacation in Chicago with my family. We passed a homeless man on the street and we were coming home from dinner and we all had like leftover doggy bags and uh, we gave we gave all our leftover food to the man. I mean, I, I guess we could have given more, but you know, at the moment that, that was what we felt and what seemed right. So there are little things you can do to try and help. Yeah, it's the little things that count. Some people accumulate things because they are afraid of not having enough. In the scripture, we listen to the teachings of Jesus telling his disciples not to be anxious about possessions. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, it reads, If God so clothes the grass of the field, which grows today and is thrown in the oven tomorrow, will he not much more provide for you, O you of little faith? As disciples of Christ, we are called not to build up our wealth, but to share it with others. Next, Bethany talks about how her faith teaches her that you don't need money to be happy. For me, per se, I guess it's pretty easy for me not to go with the flow because I've never gone with the flow. Um, I always, I, I'm just thankful for what I've got. Yes, that person might have a nice Mustang, but you know what? I have a car and it, it goes. And you know what? If I can't, at least I have something that moves. And you know what? Some people aren't that fortunate to have to have a car. So mm -hmm. you know what? I'm thankful for what I have. There's many people that I know that have a lot of money. Uh, for example, there's people that work at this church that have tons and tons of money, like to, to the extremes of money, and yet they're here helping out people and volunteering their time. They don't need to be paid. They're just happy uh, helping other people. Faith teaches me that what God really intended was for people here on earth to help others who are less fortunate, to love God and to love your family. And as long as you love God, you love your family, and you're helping others, then you're probably going to have the most prosperous life, even if you don't have money. That is so true. Money can't buy you happiness. And did you know that greed is one of the seven capital sins? Webster defines greed as an excessive desire for acquiring or having. A desire for more than one needs or deserves. As Christians, we believe that God provides enough resources for all people. Resources are not to be possessed by a privileged few, rather they're to be used by those who need them. When some people accumulate more than their share of things, there are other people who don't even have access to what they need. Greedy attitudes and behaviors separate a person from God by the misuse of God's gifts. What teachings in our faith motivate and help you to be more grateful and less greedy? Well, if uh, Jesus, the Savior of the world, was born in a stable, then I would say something about how I have to be thankful. Thankful that I live in a house with food and, you know, I have a nice bed that I sleep in at night. Yeah. Not a manger. I thought, mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. I've always liked the story of when Jesus walked into a church and they were taking up the collection and there were all these people, wealthy merchants and everything, who were carrying buckets of gold, but they could spare it because they were wearing nice clothes and everything. And then a woman, poor woman with rags and two little children comes up and puts two pennies in the collection basket, but that was all she had. And Jesus praised her while condemning the rich men because she gave everything. And even though they gave more, that was only a fraction of what they actually had. In the story of the prodigal son, he took his part of the inheritance and he went out and he got all caught up in the greediness and materialistic views of the world and he ended up losing everything. But then he went back home and his father welcomed him with open arms, even though he did that. It's so a good example too. God always forgives you even if you are greedy. Yeah, like when Jesus was at the temple and there was all the people selling stuff in front of the temple and Jesus got upset that they were marketing in front of the temple and he threw over all the tables and everything. You know, it just shows how easily, like, it's the same today, how people get, like, caught up in the media. Just like the story of St. Francis, how he was the son of a rich merchant and he gave up everything that he had just to find his connection with God because the money that he had was blocking his relationship with God and he just wanted to work with the poor and be one of the poor persons and just he wore that one robe that he had like for a very long time. It's important to 
listen to these um, scripture passages and look at our church history and try and apply these things to our lives today, like with the story of the prodigal son or um, with the one you're talking about with um, the merchants outside the, the temple. Imagine just taking all your parents' money and going off and buying whatever you want and getting stuck in that whole consumer society or people coming outside your church and selling whatever they want. It's it's an extreme, but that's how, how you have to look at it to, tr to truly understand what a burden um, the consumer society can become on you. Having too many possessions can be a burden. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 6, Jesus teaches us that no one can serve two masters. He will either hate one and love the other, or be devoted to one and despise the other. Possessions claim your attention. Having too much stuff creates the need for more storage space and the time and attention to maintain it all. Do possessions claim your attention? How many possessions are too many? We want to know what you think. Contact us through our website. The address is www.realfaithtv.com Or you can call us at 609-406-7402. And here is one final thought. In the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 19, Jesus challenged a rich young man to sell all he had before following him. Leaving behind his possessions would enable the young man to focus all his attention on discipleship. Jesus continued saying, Amen, I say to you, it will be hard for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of heaven. Again, I say to you, it is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on Real Faith TV. God bless.